Please be seated. The court is now in session. For today's proceeding, we will continue to hear the testimony of this witness who will be questioned by the defense teams, starting from Kiel Sampon's team first. Before I hand the floor to the Kiel Sampon defense team, Mrs. Sakoboti could report the attendance of the parties and individuals to the proceeding. Sakobuti, Mr. President, all parties to the proceeding are present, except the National Defense Council for Ian Sari, that is Council and Odom. And the accused is present in the holding cell downstairs as he requests to waive his direct presence through his counsel for today's proceeding. The letter of waiver has been uh, submitted to the Grafie. As for the reserve witness, after the conclusion of this witness testimony, that is TCW 307, the witness is present in the waiting room to be called by the chamber. And to the witness knowledge, the witness has no relationship with any of the civil party or any of the three accused. The witness already took an oath this morning. Thank you. President, thank you. The chamber will now decide on the request by the accused Ian Sari. The chamber received the request by Ian Sari dated 5th September 2012 through his counsel to waive his direct presence in the courtroom and instead to follow it through audiovisual means from the holding cell downstairs. Chi Kun TV, the treating daughter of the accused, has examined him at the ECCC detention center this morning and observed that he is fatigued for only a slightest movement, he feels dizzy when stands up and he has to visit the bathroom frequently. And the comments that the chamber saw authorized him to follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs. And as the accused insert himself requests to waive his static presence in the courtroom due to his health problem, and as observed and recommended by the, the treating doctor, that he should be following the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs and that he can communicate with his uh, defense team directly. The chamber grants the request through his waiving of the direct presence and that he is allowed to follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs through audiovisual means that applied for the whole day proceeding. If a unit, you are instructed to link the proceeding to the holding cell downstairs for him to follow. Mr. Nong Sopong, the chamber received information that uh, you do not feel that well due to your high blood pressure but it is your commitment that you express that you wish to continue to testify before this courtroom. And if you think that you are unwell and you cannot proceed, please make such a request to the chamber when the time comes. And do not hesitate to do so.
witness. Thank you, Mr. President. President, the floor is now given to Kiel Sampon's defense to put questions to this witness. However, before that, I'd like to give the floor to Judge Lavange and the Kids Upon Defense team may proceed after Judge Lavange. Oui, merci, Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Nong Supong. I am Judge Laverne. I have a few questions for you. I want to thank you for all of your efforts to stay and to testify. Your testimony is very valuable, and that's exactly why I wish to elucidate some of the points you have raised. I wish to review with you a certain number of telegrams. The first telegram is classified under document number E3-243. I have a hard copy here, which I can certainly make available to the witness. Voilà. Je précise que, uh... Allow me to point out that a list of documents that is going to be referred to today has been conveyed to all parties uh, for ease of reference and as a matter of courtesy. This list contains the ERN numbers of all of the documents. Therefore, if I can spare myself of citing all of the ERN numbers each time I uh, refer to a document, this will uh, help uh, expedite the unfolding of this morning's hearing. Now, E3244 is telegram 16 that is signed by Chun. It is directed to Brother Parr. And at the end of the second page, there is some information regarding those who were sent a copy of this particular document. It is dated the 25th of January 1978. Now, there seems to be some difficulties that arise from the French translation. This document appears to have been CC to Uncle Noon, Brother Non, Brother Q, Office and Archive. Now, the first uncle uh, that is listed uh, in the French version lists uh, all those recipients uh, in the plural. Now, you, sir, have the original Khmer copy. Therefore, can you please tell me if uncle is written in the singular or in the plural? The same question applies uh, to the indication of office, because once again in the French version, uh, there is mention of offices in the plural. Therefore, I wish to know whether this was destined for office 870 or several offices in addition to 870. Thank you. Thank you. Regarding the copy to Angkor, Angkor here is in a singular form, not in a plural form. It refers to Brother Paul, that is Brother Number One. As for the office, the office also is in a singular form. It refers to only one office. That is the office 870. It is not just any other offices around Phnom Penh. Alors, à propos de ce bureau. 
With respect to Office 870, do you know exactly where Office 870 was located? Where was the place that uh, Office 870 uh, was housed? Was it at K1 or was it at another location? Do you know this? Do you have any pieces of information that would allow you to say that 870 was located at such and such an address? I myself is not clear either on this issue. What I knew was that after I decoded the message, the message then would be sent to K1. En l'occurrence. When we look at the list of the recipients to whom this telegram was copied, there is uh, Uncle Pol Pot in office. There seems, it would appear that this was destined for several parties. Therefore, is Pol Pot the office? It is my understanding that for uncle, that is, uncle here means one copy to Pol Pot, and uh, one copy will be maintained at the office, in addition to the one copy that was that is that was sent or given to Pol Pot. Alors, ce télégramme est signé. This telegram was signed off by Chun. You stated that it's difficult for you to identify who Chun is, but today are you able to tell us who exactly was Chun? I did not know Chun clearly as a person. However, as in previous messages, The person who had the authority to report to the upper level and in this particular instance it was a telegram from the East Zone and also previous telegrams from the zone bear the name of Chun. Chun must be in the leadership level as the East Zone. Donc, est-ce qu'on peut dire? Therefore, is it possible that it was Sao Pim, or is this not certain? Could it be a possibility? I'm not asking you whether or not you know this, but do you think it's possible that it could have been Sao Pim? But we mean yes, that is possible. As your honor knows, brother Q, they did not use the word son saint, but they used alias Q or brother Q. And that referred to Sun Sen and not Kiu Sampon. And as for Chon, they would not use the exact name Sao Pum. They could use the, the alias Chon, which was known during the regime. That is a possibility. Bien. Uh, Very well. Indeed, this telegram does emanate from the East Zone, and it does provide a certain number of information with respect to the situation at the border area, in particular, uh, what is happening with Vietnam. Allow me to 
quote paragraph three of this document. And I quote, as for the people's situation, it is in order. The people living near the border were moved back to the rear. And we are having the study meetings continuously. Moreover, cleaning the elements of the UN enemy network and not allowing them to mix with good people by following them and educating them separately. End of quote. Did you receive this type of document frequently? Or is this something, is this a document uh, that contained substance matter that took you by surprise? The content was about screening And regarding this matter, I received such a content in a number of telegrams from various other zones. The issue is that I did not know how the screening was conducted in any particular situation. Bien, alors je précise donc qu'il s'agissait du télégramme. I would just uh, wish to specify that this is indeed telegram E3-244. Khmer ER numbers are 000 0-0-0-0-1-0-5-2-2-0-0-0-0-1-0-5-3. French ERNs are 63 86-87. English ERNs 0 to 56 let us now move to E3-243. This is telegram number 15, and I have a hard copy here to hand over to the witness. I'll just cite the ERN numbers. ERN numbers in Khmer are 00020938240. French ERN numbers are 00548911213 and ERN in English are 0, 0, 0053 to 96. Now, once again, there seems to be some discrepancies between the French and English versions of this telegram. In English, it reads as to respected and missed brother Pa. In French, it is directed to respected and greatly loved elder brother. Sir, can you please tell me what uh, the Khmer says? To respected brother Paul, here they use the alias Paul, not Paul. But Paul here refers to Paul or brother number one. Did Paul Pot have several alias names? Was he sometimes called Paul? or were there other ways of identifying Pol Pot? During the period under the regime, the alias Paul was usually used by the East Zone. As for other zones, They usually use the word Paul instead of Paul. And sometimes they did not use Paul or Paul, but they would just say respected and missed brother. And the word brother alone here referred to brother number one, and nobody was about brother number one.
Alors, ce télégramme. This telegram was sent by the same person, Chun. Once again, the telegram originates from the East Zone. It provides a report on the situation at the border. And in paragraph three, which is on page two of this document, it reads as follows. I quote, people movement. We organized the people and had them all evacuated from the front. The troops were defending the front. Regarding people's organization, we retrieved a large number of people who were herded by the UN enemy to be under their temporary control and those who believed to be the UN. Currently, we have organized ourselves to have them returned to the rear for re-education, grouping, and screening. End of quote. Is this a telegram that you would have decoded yourself, or was it sent to another service to be decoded? Do you have any recollection with respect to this very specific telegram? But, uh regarding the East Zone, as they had a frequent conflict with Vietnam, and the telegrams sent from this zone were not the main telegrams that my group were to decode. All those telegrams were decoded at the inside, not by the outside team. Based on your knowledge, can you please tell us what you think re-education, grouping, and screening mean? These are the terms that are used in the third paragraph that I have just read aloud. I'm referring in particular to the terms re-education, grouping, and screening. To your mind, what does this mean? I could not explain precisely what these terms mean. I did not want to make a presumption since I am uncertain and I declined to comment on these terms because in reality I did not know what happened at the base. For that reason, I do not want my explanation to be misleading. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Witness. Just one last bit of clarification with respect to this telegram. Those who were copied are Uncle Noon. Brother Van, Brother Vaughan, office and documentation. Now, am I to presume that Nun is Nun Chia? Van, is that presumed to be Mr. Yang Sari? Uh, good. Yes, it's Mr. Yang Sari. Est-ce que Monsieur? And did Mr. Yang Sari carry other uh, revolutionary names? Was he called anything? Uh, other than Brother Van? No. Donc, Frère Vorn, Vorn Vett. Therefore, Brother Vorn is Vorn Vett, and then this telegram is also copied to the office and documentation. Let us move on to another telegram, telegram 69. Here again, I have a hard copy that I can make available to the witness. This telegram is classified under document number E3-1122. The ERN Khmer numbers are 00020932. The French ERN number is 00511. 
626 and ERN in English is 00436992. This particular telegram is destined to respected brother. It is dated 11th of January 1978. It is signed by a certain person called V. Can you please confirm that the respected brother is indeed Paul Potting? Can you please tell us uh, whether or not this is signed by V and who V is? Uh V is the NAST is Zone Secretary. Bien. Donc, uh, Very well. In the last paragraph of this telegram, it reads as follows. For general measure, this is the rice harvesting period. The rice is transported inside at sectors 104, 101, and 107. Some people will be transferred to M5, M6, Copne, and Ospe. People on the west side of the river in Siem Pang, while preparing the rice paddies, will be removed gradually to the east side until the sufficient amount is reached. Sector 107 is close to the border with Laos and has difficulties in terms of water. M5 and M6 of the Laotian side is close to the border, like in Koh Phnu. Ospe. Uh, sir, can you please describe to me the places that are mentioned there? I presume that M5 and M6 are located in sector 107, but is this something that you can confirm or clarify for me? But, uh, response uh, for sector 104, 101, and 107, they were the sectors, but as for M5 or M6, uh, I, I do not know. Actually, M code at that time <coughs> referred to the office. They uh, were not the sectors. Alors, il est question de dans ce télégramme. Now, this telegram talks about movements of people from one place to the other. Does this remind you of anything? Do you recall messages of the same nature dealing with movements of people in the sectors or the sectors and the region of the Northeast? I have never encountered the movement of people. Alors, je précise que ce document. Let me point out that this document is sent to Uncle Non, Brother Van, Brother Vaughan, Brother Kev, and to the office and documentation. Now, let us talk about document E3. slash 884. I have a hard copy for the witness. Could the court officer hand this uh, document to the witness? Alors, il s'agit donc du document E3 bar. So it is document E3 slash 898. And the ERN in Khmer is as follows, 00 
2903 and the French ERN is 0033 and in English it is 0018-3626. This telegram is dated the 11th of December 1977. It was sent to the respected and beloved 870. And it was delivered by a person called Say. May I again ask you, Mr. Witness, whether you can enlighten us as to who received this telegram and who sent it? Was it sent to Pol Pot? Is that the person referred to as respected and beloved 870? And uh, who sent that telegram? This particular uh, telegram was not sent uh, to the office. Actually, it was sent uh, to 870 committee. The committee in this uh, contact uh, was not referred to any specific individual, but it was meant to send to the members of the committee. And this was like other uh, telegrams. Uh, si the, the undersign of this uh, telegram was responsible for uh, one, of the s one of the zones, which was zone 801. Et cette zone était-elle une zone autonome? And was that an autonomous zone that reported directly to Office 870, to Committee 870? Generally, all the zones uh, were entitled uh, to send telegrams directly to the center. And as for the autonomous zones, which uh, encompassed Simria, Odomenje, and here provinces, and that special zone was also entitled to send a telegram directly to the center. But later on, there was a restructuring of the um, zone organization, so um, the former zones encompassing Siem Reap, Adom, and Jay and Pravi here were no longer the, under the autonomous zone. So whatever matters uh, they uh, had, uh, they have to send uh, or relay their uh, telegrams through zone A01 under the uh, supervision of the person by the name of Sai. Hello. Now let us talk about the contents of the message and I'll read out the message to you. I proposed that the unified Simrip and Dentistry districts to make them one single district because they are adjacent. Simrip district comprises 40,000 people. They are mainly new people to be distributed to other districts. The population of Bante Sre has 20,000 inhabitants, most of whom are old people. It will be unified into one district so that the old and the new people be unified. It is easy to be controlled. Bante Strait District does not have much farmland and it is less fertile. Whereas Simrip District consists of farmland along Tomle Sap River, mainly fertile soil. Only making such an assignment can 
the total fertilized soil be consumed. On the other hand, we select card with a view to gathering card forces tremendously. Did you receive such messages? Did such messages reach you? Response. Uh, that particular telegram was decoded by my team. As the other, as for other telegrams of a similar nature as this one, there was no um, indication of the uh, merging of districts uh, with other districts uh, under the zone at that time, other than these two districts. Alors, je précise que ce Let me specify that uh, this message was copied to uh, Uncle, Uncle Noon, Brother Van, Brother Ron, Brother Kiel, the office, and documentation. Let us now look at another telegram, which this time around. was shown to you by OCIG investigators. I have a hard copy of the document, which I would like uh, the court officer to hand to the witness. It is titled Telegram Number 15. And it is E3 slash 154. The Khmer ERN is quadruple zero, 84, 94, 295. French is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, It deals with uh, some discrepancy or some disagreement between the east zone and the northeast zone. It is addressed to comrade brother Paul and it is signed by Chon. talks about a disagreement between two zones. The east zone was supposed to liberate a number of uh, Islamic zones and um, it had to hand over the displaced persons. The question that arises regarding this telegram is as follows. Why was it necessary to send a telegram to Brother Paul? Could the problem not have been resolved directly between the two zones? <coughs> but, uh, response. This uh, telegram indicated the uh, disagreement between uh, the uh, East uh, Zone uh, Secretary with the North Zone Secretary, not the North East Zone Secretary. And it was addressed to Brother Paul. And according to the content of this telegram, and in my understanding, that whatever decision was made, it had to be reported for Bert, to Paul Bert because uh, he uh, was the one who made uh, the final decision. So what, um, 
was decided in the meeting but uh, eventually could not uh, be implemented, then that has to be referred uh, to the top leaders uh, to make the final decision. Let me further clarify my question. Was it possible that there would be communications between different zones and such communications had to pass through Office 870 or had to originate from Office 870? I just want you to understand my question clearly. Actually, I did not know the communication, the inter-zone communication. And neither did I know if uh, there was a communication between uh, zones or among zones uh, had to uh, go to Office 870. Well, and I did not know what actually uh, happened particularly the communication uh, on the uh, on the ground at the base Alors, ce telegram dans son the contents of this telegram show that there was a principle according to which the charm had to be dispersed did you hear about that or do you recall receiving any messages regarding the idea or the need to disperse the charm? According to my understanding through my uh, decoding experience of telegrams, there was no information about the dispersal of uh, Cham, Muslim Cham ethnicity. There was only uh, these uh, telegrams that made mention uh, about this uh, segregation or disbursement uh, of dispersing of uh, Muslim Cham's ethnicity. And I actually did not have uh, this telegram with me at that time. So I only learned about this uh, when I am presented with this particular telegram. I am not quite sure I grasp your explanations. Are you saying that you do not remember receiving any telegrams referring specifically to Muslim charm or Islamic charm as opposed to charm? Quite simply, is that what you're saying? Uh, response. I do not recall because to my recollection, all the telegrams I decoded were not related to uh, Cham ethnicity in Cambodia. Let me point out that uh, we've already talked about it. Those who received that message was, apart from Paul, Brother Nguyen, Brother Jun, Brother Yem, and a copy was also sent to the archives. Nous allons donc passer à une autre. Let us now look at another series of telegrams that are partly related to the problem we have just referred to. That is the problem of communication between zones. The first telegram is E3 slash 1221. I also have a hard copy of that document for the witness.
in its telegram number 14, the ERN in Khmer is quadruple 01263. ERN in French, 00623007. And ERN in English is 0079, or rather 0077-7988. This telegram is addressed to the highly respected and beloved Anka. It is dated the 26th of June, 1977. And it was sent to M four hundred and one. The telegram talks about the arrest of twenty four persons by the security agents, the militia, I suppose, of Precri Cooperative in Compongyon district, Compongyang region. And the author of this telegram asks whether those persons are not likely to have fled from the North Zone. He wishes to obtain explanations and requests Anka, that is in paragraph 4, and it reads as follows. They fled 109 days ago. Consequently, May I request Anka to contact the North Zone to ask whether there are zones from which people fled and what measures are envisaged by Anka, end of quote. Again, let me ask you whether you regularly received telegrams from zones asking Office 870 or Anka to convey information or send requests for further information to zones. Do you know whether that was a frequent practice? <coughs> but, uh, response. I do not quite understand uh, this telegram because it was not within uh, the regular telegrams I decoded. But I think uh, that uh, there was a communication from B1 to North Zone. That's why they sent uh, this telegram to Anka, and Anka in this uh, context was referred to Office 870. And it was like other telegrams you presented earlier, whenever there was no means of communication to a certain place, uh, then they, the telegram had to go to Office 870 before it was relayed to the target recipient. Well, witness, from a practical standpoint, witness, each zone had its uh, independent telegraph service. It had its coding and decoding and telegram services. So from a purely practical standpoint, was it possible for one zone to send telegrams to another zone? But, uh response. Yes, that the, uh, all the zones had their respective coding and decoding of telegrams independently. 
However, the communication between uh, zones and zone, I did not know whether or not uh, that was allowed, and I did not understand the internal arrangement of the party or Anka. So if I correct, uh, correctly understand what you have just stated, you say from a, a practical standpoint it is possible, but you do not quite understand the instructions that were given to the various people involved regarding the latitude they had with in sending the telegrams. Let me point out that the telegram was copied to uncle, that is Pol Pot, uncle Nguyen, Brother Van, Bron Von, Brother Kiev, the office and the documentation. A last example of a telegram sent is in E3 slash 254. And I have a hard copy of this document for the witness. This document, E3-254, can be viewed through the following ERN numbers. The Khmer is 0002972, French 00504013, and in English 00377840. This telegram is addressed to Brother C and Pok and it is signed Office 870. It is dated the 20th of March, 1978. It is very short, and I'll read it out. Be informed that the East Zone has sent a copy of the report on the enemy's activities in Mok Kampul to the office by requesting the office to send to you, brother. Brother, please monitor this situation and take any measure based on the reality by communicating with Mok Kampul. So we find here a request from one zone for requesting that a report be forwarded to another zone. Can you tell us who brother C. Ampok were? to the best of your knowledge. But, uh, Response. Actually, this is not a telegram because there was no um, heading and there was no number. And either, but as for the uh, target recipient of this was Brother C, and Brother C in this contact at that time he was in the leadership level uh, of one of the zones. If I uh, can recall he was in charge of the uh, West Zone, but as Brother Polk, uh, he was the Secretary of North Zone. And can you tell us who was the signatory on behalf of Office 870, did you often receive telegrams signed by Office 870? Did Pol Pot sign documents referred to as uh, on behalf of 870? Here we see the code number with M 
prefix. So it refers to the office. And the uh, signatory of this uh, letter was Office 870. And normally, uh, in other telegrams, they uh, would uh, copy to Brother One, Brother Q, and, br and other brothers. And so M870 here is referred to the members of uh, Office uh, 870 Committee. J'entends bien, Monsieur, mais là, le I very well understand, witness. The document or the telegram is sent by Office 870. Do you have any idea as to who physically, who concretely represented Office 870, who drafted the document under the name 870? Since 870 was not an individual person, do you have an idea as to who that person was? Based on the number of documents that I have seen, I can form my understanding. And if you look back into the meetings of the Standing Committee, you can form your view that the Standing Committee could appoint someone to be in charge of the political office or the administrative office of Office 870. And if you do that research, you would find out who would be in charge of Office 870. The minute or meetings of the standing committee could reveal the meeting that was held either on the 9th or on the 10th. And there is no need for me to explain further. Indeed, we will review the minutes of those meetings. However, what is of importance to us today is your testimony, what you recall to the best of your memory and what you can remember personally, therefore you, uh, Mr. Nongsepon, do you personally remember? Based on information that you had at the time, who was in charge of signing on behalf of Office 870? Personally, did not know who would be in charge of M870. Based on the document, Dune was appointed to be in charge of the political office of 870, and another person by the name of Pong, he was in charge of the state office. So I did not know which one amongst the two will be able to authorize and to become a signatory of M870. And due to this uncertainty, I cannot provide you a precise response. And do you know if Dun and Pong fell victim to the purges? Were they arrested? And if so, were they replaced? As for Pong, who used to be my trainer and my supervisor, I knew that he disappeared before the 7th January. And as for Dune, I did not know what happened to him or when he disappeared. Et savez-vous? 
And do you know who replaced Pong? By that time, that is when it was close to 7 at January, I did not know how or whom Onka appointed to replace him. Yeah, well. Very well. Let us move on to another series of telegrams. I'll begin with E3 slash 1077, and once again, I have a hard copy to provide to the witness. Alors, je pense que c'est un télégramme qui a déjà dû être... I believe that this telegram has already been discussed and introduced to you, uh, Mr. Witness, unless I am mistaken. This is telegram entitled number 324. It is signed by Se. It is dated the 10th of April, 1978. Now on the top left-hand corner of the telegram, there is a written annotation. Do you see that annotation? And could you please read uh, into the record that annotation? The annotation is Uncle Noon. Merci. Thank you. This telegram is addressed to, respectfully sent to, beloved Committee 870. It contains some information with respect to the... It concerns the situation of the enemy along Thailand and Laos. It also makes reference to agricultural production and harvest. Let us go over uh, to paragraph three of the document, and it reads as follows. The situation of the enemy uh, within the country. There's no important change. The situation is normal. We are continuing to purge the remaining group continuously, including those who oppose our revolution openly and secretly. We have strong support from the people, especially the base class people, who are, now be, who are now seeing more clearly who is a friend and who is the enemy. In Sector 103, we carry out the purge of the hiding, burrowing enemy. We depended on the people and we have done it well. The enemy is not able to raise their heads anymore because the people force is so strong. In addition, the force oppresses them constantly. The sweeping cleanse and screening them constantly. We have won over these enemies since the beginning up until now. The purge of the enemy in sector 103 has made the people very happy. This is a verbatim uh, quote. during the period of democratic Kampuchea, what was the meaning of purge? What does elimination mean? Sector 103 is an autonom autonomous zone encompassing a Pravihir province. However, later on it became part of 801 zone. Regarding the term purge, I made my statement already before the Office of the Co Investigating Judges, and I used the word perhaps because it was based on my understanding that I myself never went to the base or engaged in any of the purging activity. Based on its literal meaning of the word purge, it means to 
sweep clean or to make it clean. However, the practical term under any regime it would mean the removal of the opposed elements. That would be the meaning of, of the word purge. So those who oppose the regime would be purged. And therefore, if I understand what you were telling us, sir, for you, the term purge and the term eliminate, and the term cleanse, or the term purify, are all equivalent. Is this correct? Do they all mean that one is removed? After which, what happens? Why are they removed and what happens to them subsequently? You request for my explanation and let me do so. I would explain based on my understanding. And if my understanding is not correct, it is at the discretion of the chamber to dismiss it. The three words, namely screening, purging, and eliminating. The word screening has its literal meaning which means to make it clean or pure or to purify it as you just stated. That is the literal meaning. However, in its practical term, this is again based on my understanding, that in the gathering of forces, The, the selection process has to be very, very careful, has to be very precise, that the background and biographies has to be examined, the morality, the living style, before the person was recruited to work, and also the previous work performance had to be examined. So before a person was recruited to take up a position, then the screening process would kick in. As for the word purge, I already explained its, lit its literal meaning, that is to sweep clean. And its practical term, again, based on my understanding, that is the removal of any elements that opposed its regime. And that is its practical term. And when it comes to the term smashing, smashing bears a more serious connotation than the word screening, more heavy connotation than purging. The literal meaning of smashing, it means to make it into tiny pieces. However, during that regime, the word smashing was used generally. For instance, we smash one enemy ammo tank. It means the tank was destroyed and cannot be used. That is in regard to the smashing of a material. As for the smashing of people, it carries the heaviest connotation. It means the killing or the execution of the people. 
This is based on my personal understanding, Your Honor. Bien, je vous remercie. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to another topic because I see that uh, time is of the essence. And therefore, I'm going to move on to another series of telegrams uh, that relates to the same problem, in fact. Yesterday, we also talked about uh, problems of communications with abro uh, from abroad. Mr. Witness, I'm not entirely sure that I correctly understood what was said yesterday, but can you please tell us if there were telegrams that were sent from Phnom Penh uh, to uh, another country and how they were received? It is my understanding that it was not related uh, to my work and that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was involved and I did not know for sure. Also regarding the communication with uh, the outsiders or with foreign countries and as the court uh, indicates any foreign forces could not be punished or put on trial so whatever I said or whatever I understand would not bear any significance regarding the intention of this court However, if this court has jurisdiction to try foreigners who had their hand involved in the war in Cambodia, I am delighted to once again come to testify regarding this fact. And if so, please try to gather all the relevant evidence and documents. Mr. Witness, that was not my question. I think we are diverting from uh, this subject at hand. I simply want to give you a copy of a telegram in order to clarify a question or a matter that was raised yesterday. So if you will, Mr. Uh, court Officer, hand this document over to the witness. This document is E3-1121. It is dated the 21st of December 1977, addressed to a respected and beloved brother. And if I have an accurate translation of this document, it was sent from Pyongyang, signed by Yem. And it it would appear that Yem was the ambassador of uh, Democratic Kampuchea based in North Korea. Therefore, did you frequently receive telegrams that were destined for Office 870 or for Brother Pol Pot, and which came from abroad, that came from uh, embassies in China, for instance, or in North Korea or in any other country? certain regarding this matter. At that time, after the liberation, the diplomatic relationship somehow formed and initiated. In reference to this, uh, the content of this telegram, it made me recollect that the telegram falls within the my working uh, group. However, later on, 
when the foreigners could work sufficiently, then they dealt exclusively with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and this telegram was actually done in late 1977. And as uh, your honor understand, James was the person who worked at the and at the Cambodian embassy in North Korea. Donc, il y avait bien des... And therefore, there were communications between Phnom Penh and certain foreign countries uh, through the embassies. Can we arrive at that conclusion? As uh, I knew to a certain degree, they did not have to communicate directly with the embassies. K-18 office itself would be able to send telegrams through the radio wave directly through the embassy in Pyongyang. The signal could reach Korea. Est-ce que votre bureau Was your office ever led to decode or decrypt messages concerning trade matters, concerning commercial matters, such as the import and export of goods and materials destined for countries abroad? No, not in my team. We never decoded that message. Alors, je voudrais revenir un petit peu à... Uh, Allow me to return very briefly to what you said with respect to Mr. Kyo Sampan. When Mr. Kyo Sampan received uh, a telegram directly, or when he was copied to a message, what was the name or alias or identity used for Mr. Kyo Sampan? How was he identified? As for Mr. Kyo Paul, his alias was Brother Haim. Haim referred to him. Did he have any code names? Did he have any other aliases? Was there any other method of identifying him? No. Besides him, there was besides him, there was none. Et lorsque Monsieur and when Mr. Kiosampan sent messages himself, did he sign off as Brother Hem, or did he sign off using a different name? His message was opened message. He could either use Haim or kill some pawn. For instance, regarding instructions to the people at the base to await his announcement or his instruction for them to take a break to listen to his announcement. For that kind of message, he would use his real name, Kiu Sampon. If I understood what you said correctly yesterday, you had a direct telephone line to Mr. Kiu Sampon. And Kiu Sampon would call upon your services to uh, encrypt 
messages that he sought to send. Did Mr. Kyusampa hold the same ranking as Office K1? Did he use the services uh, for the same reasons and in the same conditions, or were any um, special allowances or entitlements given to Mr. Kyusampa? He had the right to use my group as the same rights that the K1 had. And in regards to his message, usually the content was about the uh, organization and the distribution of materials. That is the difference. K1 had the authority to issue or to respond to any kinds of uh, telegram or message. But as for Mr. Kissam Porn, mainly his messages were relevant or related to the distribution of materials. Hier, vous nous avez Yesterday, you provided some explanations uh, before this chamber regarding a table, an organizational chart that you had presented initially to the co-investigating judges. And at the very top of this organizational chart, there was uh, Office 870, followed by the Presidium, followed by the State Assembly, followed by the uh, Assembly of uh, Peoples. And there are some arrows pointing to a subgroup of ministries. What do the arrows mean? Does that mean that Mr. Kiyosampan holds a, a ranking of superiority over these ministries? Was he copied on all telegrams that were destined to the ministries? Why did you draw an arrow between the state presidium and ministries? Once again, I will... Uh, point out that I'm referring to document E3 slash 209.12 or document D200 slash 9.12 corrects the interpreter. But, uh, in general for the governance of a state the president of the state presidium would oversee all the ministries. On the civil side, he had the authority to get information to manage the ministries. That would be the common occurrence within a government. That is, the government was in charge of the civil administration. Here, I did not draw an arrow pointing towards the Ministry of Defense or and the arrow only indicated to the ministries or the civil ministries, not the military one, that would fall under his management. He did not have the authority to oversee the defense or the ministry of defense or the military as they used they had their own headquarters supervised by Sun Sen. So once again, I repeat, he did not have authority over the military or soldiers. And that's what I meant in the chart that I drew. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, there were the civil part and the military part within the ministries. Je voudrais vous poser une question. Par My question relates to what you personally were witness to. Now, at the time, you were in charge of the decoding and uh, uh, deciphering unit. You received telegrams that were destined to certain ministries. Were those telegrams sent uh, to Mr. Kiyosampan as a copy? Were you an eyewitness to any communications between ministries uh, and Mr. Kiyosampan? If that is the case, please answer so and provide some explanations. Uh, no, I did not know that. Alors, revenons très rapidement à. Very quickly, let us return to the situation um, during the time that you worked at B1 and uh, the liberation of Phnom Penh. You explained that the encrypting and decoding service was split in two. There was one section that was based in B1. Uh, which was under your auspices. And then there was another uh, section that was led by Mr. Paul Pot um, on the westernly end of Phnom Penh. You stated that you never received any messages concerning instructions to forge a military plan to attack Phnom Penh, and you do not have any recollection of messages concerning the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Have I correctly and accurately summarized what you said in earlier testimony and what you were saying now? Uh, yes, that is correct, and that is also the truth. Alors, pour autant, quand vous êtes... That said, while you were at B20, you stated that you were able to contact Pon permanently, who worked with Pol Pot. And if I understood you correctly, your service, B20, was in charge of encrypting messages sent to the base. My question to you is as follows. After the 17th of April, did you receive messages regarding the implementation of instructions relating to the receipt of persons evacuated from Phnom Penh. Did you receive messages that were aimed at informing the base that the people evacuated had arrived and that they had to be received, they had to be taken care of, they had to be fed and housed? Do you recall receiving such telegrams? No, I have no. I have never received such a telegram. J'aurai très rapidement. I have two more questions to put to you very quickly particularly with regard to the organization of Office K-1. I will show you a document, and it is E3-858. And that document should be handed to the witness. The hard copy of the document should be given to the witness. Voilà, donc euh, ce document. This document contains a list of staff members of uh, Office K1. And I note that there are two columns K1, then you have K as in general, and under K you have K1, 
and it is mentioned almost at the end of the document and it refers to K1 outside of uncle's office. Do you know whether there were two groups at K? Two K offices headed by different persons? But uh, to my recollection, K1 and Brother Lin in this particular document, and when I was uh, providing my testimony in front of the uh, Office of Co-Investigating Judges. Lin here was referred to as uh, Kaim. I think they were the, uh, the, these two names were referred to as one person. He was the person in charge, not only within the uh, building, but also uh, the premises uh, surrounding the building complex. He was in charge of the security both inside and outside the premise of the uh, K-1. I have two other questions to put to you, but I think it is time for us to take the coffee break. The President. Thank you, Judge. The time is now appropriate for adjournment. Uh, the chamber will adjourn now until 11. Uh, the court, the officer is instructed to uh, facilitate the witness uh, to rest during the uh, break and have him back before the chamber by 11. The court is now adjourned. Some